So the Bible scripture today is the main verse I'm going to use for our sermon. And it's talking about his faithfulness. And I'm going to sign it that way. Not just continuous for faithfulness. His continuing faithfulness. So I'll use that sign. I'm sorry, I got confused. <laughs> so it says, for my name's sake, talking about God, he says, I defer my anger. For the sake of my praise, I've restrained it. So that I may not cut you off. So behold, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tried you, tested you in the furnace of affliction for my own sake, for my own sake, I do it. For how should my name not be profane? My glory I will not give to another. You might be a little puzzled about the meaning, but I'll explain that during the sermon. Okay, so you might know or be familiar with a story of a ship hitting an iceberg. You know what an iceberg is? The Titanic, right? That's the ship that hit the iceberg. It looked to appear to be a small iceberg, but the ship sunk. And why? The iceberg seemed to be relatively small, but it was what was hidden underneath the water. This is what an iceberg looks like. It was a very impressive picture to me. <laughs> Jaw dropping, right? So very deep, even though what appears above the surface is very small. You might have heard this before, the tip of the iceberg. That's a quote or an idiom, and what it means, for example, maybe you work for a company, and somebody tells you that the business is not going well. You know, I'm sorry to hear that, but you're able to still continue to work. But you find out that there's a much bigger issue. You know, then you find out that you might get laid off from work. You know, so it's a deeper problem. And it can become worse than what you think. You know, there's a difference in hearing I don't think the business is going well versus being laid off. You understand what I mean? So it's the same idea. You know, the tip. You really think that there's nothing to it, but there's a lot more to it that's it. So what I'm going to talk about is our faithfulness. And I'm going to sign it this way for faithfulness because it's our continuation or our constant faithfulness. I trust Jesus for salvation, but maybe you feel burdened. You feel like your faithfulness to God by attending church, faithfulness in reading the Bible. If I don't remain faithful, that's bad. I'm finished, right? Bad things will happen. No, that's not true. But let's start. Father, we're so grateful, Lord, that you are there with us. That regardless if we feel weak and how many times we fail, we fail you, and we stray, and we repent and get back, and we make bad decisions, just all these various things. But Lord, we thank you for your continued faithfulness. And to help us see 
that your faithfulness is so deep and strong. In Jesus' name, amen. So, our faithfulness. It, you might feel very burdened with that. You feel that you're doing it by yourself to be faithful. You know, going to church. You know, you might actually feel relieved to be together. You know, just like we discussed in the Sunday school this morning. You know, being faithful. You know, trying not to stray. You know, and you think that God's looking down on you, saying, look at you. You know, maybe you might feel that way. But you shouldn't. So under the surface is his faithfulness. It's so deep and strong. Ours is just little. Our faithfulness is very small. But his is so deep and wide. So I'm going to ask you, is this a right statement? God is faithful because we are faithful. Is that a true statement? Some of you may not be sure. Oh, maybe? You know, you're asking a trick question, Brad, but I'm not trying to. But one person answered correctly, no. This statement is trying to say that God is faithful to us because we are faithful to him first. So our faithfulness means that God will return his faithfulness. So it sounds like we're dependent on what we are doing and that God looks at what we do in order to give back. So our continued faithfulness. So that is not a true statement. Well, this is not a true statement. Many churches will tell you or teach. He says, telling you to be careful if you're not faithful. God will not be there for you. That's what some churches teach, but that is not true. It is the exact opposite. We are faithful to God. Why? Because of him. Because he is faithful to us. Right? So, regardless if we fail, sometimes we stray. Sometimes we're very stupid, just like sheep who stray from the shepherd. But the shepherd is faithful to find the lost sheep. So, remember... Our faithfulness is there because of God and what his faithfulness, his faithfulness to us supports our faithfulness. So God is faithful to us. But the first thing that we have to understand about his faithfulness, he is faithful first to himself. That's important for us to understand that. God is faithful to himself. So what does that mean? That God is faithful to himself and I took this from an internet source, and it said that God is unchanging, meaning his nature remains the same. His nature is steadfast. And he stays true to his word. So what he says is truth. Has promised salvation to his people, those who trust in him, and will keep his promises forever. And he will keep his promises forever. 
and says that he, God, is worthy of our eternal trust. Notice, no matter, no matter what. Though we stray often, it might be a hundred times, if we fail and don't do what God has told us to do, regardless, God is still faithful to us. He is still with us. And we thank God for that. He knows our weaknesses. He knows our shortcomings. He knows everything. And he supports us. So I'm talking about us who are true Christians. Those who have received salvation. I'm not talking about those general in the world. You know. You know, those that sit there and talk about, yeah, I believe in God, even though they may not go to church. But I'm talking about true Christians, those that are truly his children, those that are truly saved. Will you ever lose your salvation? No. People out say that you have to be careful. If you're not faithful, you can lose your salvation. And that is not true. If we lose our salvation, that means that we would have to be perfect and faithful to God and receive his approval. He is faithful regardless of what we do. Is that clear to everyone? So I love this scripture verse, and there's a couple of them, and it's really good. In Psalms, it says, Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. So it says that his love is to the heavens, extends to the heavens. So the word heavens the air, the sky, and then outer space. You know, you have to hit a rocket to take you to the moon. His love is that far. That's how much he loves us. You know, when you look at the ocean that covers the earth, how vast that is and how great his love defeats that. His love is so much more. So his faithfulness to us extends to the clouds. So we must remember when we look at the clouds, that's his faithfulness, his steadfastness to us. So for as far as, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love to those who fear him. You know, the word fear means those who really trust him and have a heart and knows that he is holy and give him reverence. Those who really trust Jesus, that's who we're talking about. Those who fear, he is faithful to them. The next scripture, and you know, when I was studying it, really inspired me, so I hope that you feel inspired. In Jeremiah 31, we'll go through 37, says, Thus says the Lord, who gives the sun for a light by day and has fixed. It doesn't mean fix something or repair it, but it means... He's established it. Established order of the moon and the stars for light by night, who stores up the seas so that the waves roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. I mean, in his name, that's his identity. He's an all powerful God. He says truth. No one can thwart his plan. 
His love continues. There's no end. There's no changing His promises. The sun is there. The moon is placed. The stars, the planets, all have order. They're not discord. So you see the moon, does it drop? Has it fallen? Have you seen it go out of orbit? No. Everything is in perfect order. Just like God's promises of faithfulness, there is nothing changed. So verse 36, it says, if this fixed order departs from before me, means if it was to go off course, declares the word, then shall the offspring or the children of Israel cease from being a nation before me forever. So what this means is that it is impossible for perfect order to become out of course because God is never changing. What he says is true. There's no additions, no lies, no deceit. Everything is in perfect order. But if for some reason it did, it means that God says that the nation of Israel would be no longer. But we know those that trust in God, God remains faithful to them. Just like he is faithful to nature. And 37 says, thus says the Lord, if the heavens above can be measured in the foundations of the earth, talking about how the earth was created, the foundations of the world, and the universe, and can be explored, then I will cast off all the offspring of children of Israel for all that they have done, meaning sins, declares the Lord. It's impossible for us to measure the heavens and to explore the foundations of the world. It's impossible. We're human. His creation is so vast. Scientists today, through a telescope, they can't see everything that's out there. They only see about 5% of the universe. That means 95% is unknown. So can we measure that? The universe is so vast, we're unable to. He is all-powerful. So he keeps his word. He will remain faithful, and that should encourage us. So the next time we feel doubt, thinking that God might not be faithful because I'm not faithful, no, look at the heavens. Look at the order. His faithfulness remains. He is unchanging. Amen? So that should really be an encouragement. When we start to lose faith, but God remains faithful, It says, if we are without faith, you know, we go back and forth. He remains faithful. So God's nature stays the same. 
His promises remain. When we put our faith in Jesus Christ, He is faithful forever. My faithfulness? Is God dependent on my faithfulness? No. We depend on His. So why is He faithful to us? Because of agape love, yes, but it's really a little bit deeper than that. Greek word, agape. He's very impressive knowing Greek, but it does mean loving. But why does God remain faithful in his love to us? It's because of his glory. We praise him. We're in awe of him. It's his glory. You know, we did Bible reading. This is where that was from. For my name's sake. Meaning... When we look at his name, it is glorified. His name is glorified. God is saying, for my name's sake, I refer, defer my anger. For the sake of my praise, I restrain it for you, that I may not cut you off. So God's plan of salvation Sending Jesus to the cross is completed. We are now his children and we fail. Does God do away with us? Cut us off? It sounds like God's plan failed then. His plan did not fail. His glory remains. That's the reason why he cherished, his name is cherished and glorified. That's the reason why he keeps us. So it says, I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory, I give to no other. It is his. Nor my praise to carved idols, man-made idols. Does God give glory to that? No, it's his glory. It is his, not ours, not another person's. It is his. His glory. His glory is infinite, meaning there is no limit to His glory. It is ongoing, continuous, forever. Man's glory, infinitesimal. God's going to share His glory? No. How many of you watch the Republican National Convention? You know, Trump, he was speaking. You know, you know, it was lots of decorations on the stage and his name. Trump was in lights, you know, as he walked out to the stage. You know, various flags flying and people were cheering and singing. You know, you know, he was receiving glory. I'm not saying that he was wrong. No, I'm not saying that. But, you know, when you look at it, people were plotting and praising and singing. But did God give him his glory? No. It's all God's glory. So the Republican National Convention... It says, he said this quote. Remember he was an attempt assassination? You know, if it had just been a couple of um, seconds early, he would have been killed. But he says, I stand before you in this arena by the grace of the Almighty God. And that is so true. 
But is the glory for himself that his life was saved? No. Okay, it was for God's glory. Obvious? We, you know, give, try to give ourselves glory, saying, oh, I'm a good Christian. I read the Bible. I do this. No. We depend on him to give it to us. And it's all for him. The glory and the praise goes to, to you and me. The pat on the shoulder, the praise. No. The praise and the glory is to God. So it's because of his glory that he's faithful. So he keeps us. He keeps us as his children. If we stray and lose our salvation because we're not faithful, is God glorified? No. But we understand that salvation is fully his doing. It was his work. And we praise him regardless of our shortcomings. He is continually faithful to us. Amen? So the third point, God's glory. If we continue to sin, we make his name filthy or profane. People will tell us that we're living like hypocrites. Your God is no good. So what do you do? What does he do? He is working on us. He works on us to get us to become more like Jesus. We become more holy because of his work. You know, I was talking about this main scripture. This is scripture 11. It says, for my own sake, for my glory, my name, for my own sake, I do it. Do you see the words here? I do it. I do it. scripture before. It says, Behold, I have refined you. Meaning, given you difficulties, given you challenges in your life, God allows things to happen. But, not as silver. Meaning, serious refining. Like, you know, a silversmith works with metal and it's a continual refining. No, not like that. Is he, you know, strong in his refining? No, he's given you tries or tests to bear through the furnace of affliction. Right? It is hot and this might be suffering. But the reason for that is he's working on us. He wants us to trust him more. To become more like Jesus. That's what he's doing. He's doing that so that we will praise him. King Nebuchadnezzar, king in Babylon, he was very boastful. And then God made him like an animal, right? For seven years. And when he finally came to his senses, he praised the God Almighty. Just like our problems. We have to look to God and trust him. 
It's for His glory. That's the reason why it happens. To help turn people to Him. Read back up here. So back to 11. It says, He doesn't want us to continue in our sins. Because when we continue in our sins, we spoil His name. We ruin his name. For how should my name be profane? My glory I will not give to another. So if God let people continue in their sins, meaning his glory is lessened, to give glory to the devil, does he give his glory to us, to other gods? That's why he cherishes his glory. He works on us like sandpaper. You know, it's rough. He's continually to work on us to make us smooth. He does that for his glory. You know, it's not meant in a bad way for our refinement, our suffering. God means it for good. In Philippians 1, it says, And Paul wrote, I am sure of this, that he, meaning God, who began a good work in you, will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ, meaning when he returns. Why? Because it all brings glory to him. Oh, give me just a second says, God is faithful to us because we are faithful to him. No, that is not true. This is a wrong statement. Remember that. We are faithful to God. Why? Because he is faithful to us. That is the correct statement. <laughs> because he is faithful to us. That supports our faithfulness. If you removed his faithfulness, would we continue to be faithful? No. We would stray for sure. So why is God continuous in his faithfulness to us? It's to himself. That's his nature. And why is he faithful to us and to himself. Why? For his glory. His faithfulness protects us. Helps us to be steadfast in our faith. It says, as for you, O Lord, you will not restrain your mercy or hold back. Your steadfast love and your faithfulness will ever preserve me. So it's his faithfulness. When we understand who he is, we, are, we will be faithful. So he is working on us, and it's for his glory. And that should be encouraging to, to us, to be faithful to him. So his faithfulness motivates, encourages us to be faithful to him because he is faithful to us. Your faithfulness is not from yourself. God is with you. His faithfulness, his work on him is all for his glory. So there's a couple of scriptures talking about his faithfulness to us, regardless of how many times we stray, make mistakes, he continues to be faithful. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering.
And why? Because he who promised is faithful. You see? He is faithful. Our faithfulness to him, that's our response to his faithfulness. It's not reversed. You know, it says, if we, the word confess is not like admit, but it means I confess. I confess in agreement with my sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Or all sin. It says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. He will. And may your whole spirit and soul and body remain without blame. There's no blame at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. For he who calls you, he is faithful. He calls you, meaning at the time you received salvation, God called you to a life of faithfulness. Our Christian life is a life of faithfulness. That's our response to his faithfulness. For he calls you. And he, he will surely do it. That means he remains faithful. He's continuing to work on us. And that should be encouraging. I'm going to still preach. Yeah, I know that I'm getting something in my eye here. So I'll tell you this story. A friend told me. There was a man in his car and he was driving. He was following right behind a police car. And the speed limit sign said 55. You know. He felt that 55 was a little bit slow and he was following the policeman for a little bit. So he went, speeded up a little bit, maybe 57, 58. You know, he says, I'm a good driver. I think I'll be okay. I'm not worried about police pulling me over. So he went to pass and they made eye contact. And then he pulled back in front, and then the police turned on the lights. So they pulled over, and the police came to the car, and he says, I wasn't speeding very fast. The police said, you were going 58. The sign says 55. <laughs> but God's law is so numerous, right? If you're really thinking about God's faithfulness to me, and I'm faithful, and you continue in your sins, do you think you're really following God? If you sin, that means you're not being faithful. If you remain in it, he's faithful to you. If you're going, yeah, I'm faithful to God. Then what should you do? Stop sinning. Stop remaining in sin. Through the scripture here, he promises to complete sanctification. He will do it. So look at the scriptures above 23. It says that you must abstain from every form of Every kind of sin, regardless. You have to remove yourself. You have to repent. 
if you continually remain in sin, that means that you're really not faithful to God. And if you're not faithful to God, <coughs> by remaining in your sin, that could mean that you're really not saved. That you're not a Christian. That you're really not following Jesus. If you're not faithful, then God has no relationship with you. You say, I believe I'm faithful to God, then you must abstain from sin. Think about your life before God. Have you been faithful to Him? Are you motivated to be involved? Supporting the church, missions, reading the Bible? Because you follow God, you want to be faithful. Because He's faithful to you. His faithfulness outmeasures what we can do. So we're faithful to him because it's his. It doesn't require a lot from us. He wants us to give him our lives and follow him. And that's our challenge. Father, we are so grateful, Lord, for your word, how it clearly states your faithfulness to us and how we should be faithful to you. Thank you so much for your grace and your love, your steadfastness, your mercy that continues forever, and your faithfulness to us, regardless if we fail many times and we don't do what we should do. But thank you, Lord, that you give us many chances to bring ourselves back to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay.